Hi, I'm Kate Rice. I'm a BCBA and a behavior consultant with Brett DeNovi and Associates. In this video, we're going to be talking about behavioral cusps. When programming for a new learner, something we don't often explicitly consider are behavioral cusps and their large-scale impact on an individual's life once achieved. According to Rosales Ruiz and Bayer, 1997, a behavioral cusp is a behavior that has consequences beyond the change itself, some of which may be considered important. Further, what makes a behavior change a cusp is that it exposes the individual's repertoire to new environments like new reinforcement and punishment, new contingencies, new responses, and new stimulus control. Just like reinforcers, cuffs are identified by their effects, state Bosch and Fuqua in their 2001 paper offering preliminary guidelines for targeting behaviors. The fourth edition task list lists selecting behavioral cusps as a task that practicing behavior analysts should be familiar with. Rosales, Ruiz, and Bear's examples of behavioral cusps include crawling, if it leads to walking, safety, and socialization, then it's a cusp. Walking, if it leads to leg strength and participation in activities, then it's a cusp. Reading fluency, if it leads to further cognitive development and learning opportunities, then it's a cusp. Generalized imitation. If this leads to socialization and social skills taught by imitation, then this is a cusp as well. Discrimination between positive and aversive attention. If this leads to better parent-child relationships and social guidance, then this is as well a cusp. A job skill that provides disposable income, for example, bagging groceries, if this ability to earn disposable income provides new opportunities for teaching what constitutes as housing, transportation, entertainment, and responsibility, then it is as well a cusp. In these examples, important fulfills the applied of applied behavior analysis. It's relative to the individual and potentially society, and includes providing an opportunity to open new doors for growth that wouldn't otherwise be achieved. What would be a non-example of a cusp? Let's refer to example number one, crawling. Crawling would be a cusp for a child if it led the learner to opportunities for independence, walking, and teaching safety. On the other hand, while learning to balance in a tabletop position is a behavior that is required to learn how to crawl, it in itself would not be considered a cusp because it independently does not provide the same expansive and generalized opportunities for growth that crawling does. However, once balancing in a tabletop position is chained with other responses including sliding knees and reaching hands, it becomes a component of the greater cusp behavior of crawling. Not all cusps are necessarily desirable, but still are cusps as they impact future contingencies, which are equally important. For example, teaching a child that they should ask for help before trying anything independently, this is important as it leads to the ability to complete tasks correctly, like making a sandwich or sealing an envelope, but this is obviously not ideal for independence. Bosch and Fuqua's 2001 paper suggests the need for a systematic method for selecting target behaviors in programming, including thoughtful consideration of contacting new reinforcement, facilitation of subsequent learning, like prerequisite skills, competition with inappropriate responses, impacts on the learner and potentially others, and social validity. These days, we do have many different assessment methods, several of which do address the above considerations for behavioral cusps. However, it is still critical for practitioners to actively identify the why for introducing targets, especially due to a behavior's cusp potential to open doors to experiences that might not have ever been possible. Thanks for watching. Again, my name is Kate Rice. Keep watching for future videos and subscribe for more content to come.